When it comes to cancer, we sometimes talk about the genes and the alleles that seem to be connected to cancer occurrence. We also sometimes talk about treatment and how to deal with cancerous cells and tumors. But cancer is fundamentally a problem of cell growth. Cancers occur when cell growth gets out of control for a particular set or a particular lineage of cells. So let's take a look at cell growth and cell division in the context of various genes that are linked to cancer to try to figure out why tumors form. Genes undergo a microbiological process called transcription and produce a molecule called mRNA. That mRNA undergoes another process called translation to produce a molecule called a protein. Most proteins are akin to molecular machines inside our cells to facilitate the functioning of our cells. A mutant gene will produce a mutant or modified protein. So the question here is, do mutant proteins actually cause cancerous growth? Here we're going to look at four proteins called HER2, P53, BRCA1, and BRCA2. To better understand the cell biology of cancer, we need to talk a little bit about the cell cycle. Uh, a cell goes through a series of phases. Broadly speaking, a cell can be in one of two states, either in interphase or going through mitosis. If we know why a cell would move from a period of stability in interphase into a period of growth and cell division, then we might have some insight into why cancerous growths would occur. All right, cells generally exist in a period called interphase. Interphase itself has a few distinct phases within it. First, there's something called the G1 phase, or the gap one phase. Here, the, the cell is just trucking along, doing its regular cellular things, making molecules, breaking down molecules, importing stuff, exporting stuff, and so on. Sometimes cells will enter a state called G0, or G0, when they remain in a state of work and stability for an extended period of time. During the G1 phase, if certain biological conditions are present, the cell will move from the G1 phase into what's called the S phase, or the synthesis phase. These biological conditions act like a checkpoint. Think of the checkpoint like a self-assessment. Does the cell possess enough cellular resources to support two progeny cells? Is it big enough to divide into two reasonably sized cells? Are the external environmental conditions favorable for cell division? That sort of thing. Once the cell passes this G1 checkpoint, it is irreversibly committed to cell division. If something goes wrong during cell division, there's no turning back. It's either divide or die. Cells that replicate into cancerous masses are often able to pass this G1 checkpoint when really they shouldn't. So what would cause a cell to replicate before its time? One thing that's been linked to cancerous growth is an overabundance of a transmembrane protein called HER2. H-E-R stands for Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor. The HER2 gene produces the HER2 protein, and that HER2 protein is what plays the important role for cell growth. The HER2 protein will bind to another protein called the epidermal growth factor, and then set off a series of chain reactions that helps a cell pass that G1 checkpoint. So if a cell has an overabundance of the HER2 protein, then there's a much higher likelihood that this G1 checkpoint would be achieved and the cell would move into the S phase. After the G1 checkpoint is passed, the S phase or synthesis phase begins and DNA is replicated into identical paired chromatids. 
After the S phase comes the G2 phase and another checkpoint where the cell does another self-assessment. Here, the cell can either continue preparing for mitosis or it will initiate apoptosis. At this checkpoint, the P53 protein and the BRCA proteins come into play. If DNA replication was not accurate enough, the P53 protein can attempt to initiate DNA repair. And if that DNA repair isn't possible or isn't successful, P53 can initiate apoptosis. BRCA1 and BRCA2 also play a role in DNA repair if damage has occurred. So if the TP53 gene, that's the gene that's responsible for the P53 protein, if that gene has a mutation that ultimately leads to a less effective P53 protein, then there's an increased risk that errors in DNA copying wouldn't be detected. Even if they are detected, a BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene that has a mutation in it might result in a BRCA1 or a BRCA2 protein that doesn't help carry out the repairs adequately enough. In particular, if there are errors that have occurred during the replication of proto-oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes, and if those errors aren't detected or corrected by P53, BRCA1, or BRCA2, then that could lead to trouble. If a cell passes the G2 checkpoint with those types of errors, it could lead to exponential cell growth of mutant cells that could become cancerous. After interphase, for a short period of time, the cell enters the process of mitosis, where it replicates itself. Here's what that looks like. In prophase, the centrosome replicates itself, and the two centrosome copies move to either side of the nucleus. The membrane of the nucleus kind of goes away. It's broken down. The DNA, in the form of these X-shaped chromatids, they begin to congregate at the middle of the cell. Microtubules begin to form from the centrosomes and start to build towards the middle of the cell. In metaphase, the microtubules that stretch out from the centrosomes attach to the chromosomes that are now lined up along the middle of the cell. Incidentally, the BRCA proteins, they also act during metaphase to make sure that the chromosomes are lined up correctly. This is called the M checkpoint. If the chromosomes don't line up properly, then it could lead to chromosomal level mutations in anaphase. Anaphase is where motor proteins pull the microtubules and rip those replicated chromosomes in half at their middle attachment point. After this happens, in telophase, new nuclei start to form in either half of the replicating cell. Finally, the cell starts to pinch in in the middle, and the process called cytokinesis results in two new progeny cells. That's a brief snapshot of just a few of the proteins that can contribute to cancerous growth. Be sure to check out the genetics videos in this series if you want to know more about the specific mutations that can occur in the HER2 gene, the TP53 gene, or in BRCA genes. And of course, you can visit our website, www.evo-ed.org, for more resources. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.